These two grown men had never seen The Simpsons or the fucks that even happened The two grown men on a mission now So buckle up and just strap in Now this is what it's like when worlds collide Are you ready to go? Cause I'm ready to go What you gonna do, baby, baby? Are you going with me? These two grown men had never seen The Simpsons It's America's Barley Basket Welcome everyone to another episode of America's Barley Basket. I'm your host, Marlon Wells, alongside host Nathan Folsabach. Hello, Nathan. Hello, Marlon. How goes it today? Uh, you know, well, it's a rough weekend. You know, mm-hmm. things are yeah. opening up. I'm opening up. I'm blossoming, Marlon. The world is oh. the world's oh. out there, and I am letting the world come into me. I'm coming into it. Oh. We're just mushing. Yes, lots of social <laughs> mushing. And had a few too many Chardonnays and a little worse for wear on this Sunday. But I'm hydrating. I got my beverages, as I always that a do. Boy. That a Surrounded boy. Surrounded by flavor. Bevved up. Bevved up. <laughs> totally bevved up. I uh, I also, after after a, over a year of barely leaving my apartment, uh, just binged social activities for the last like three days and i am exhausted (laughs) like not even not even a whole lot of drinking getting done a little bit a little bit but not mostly just mostly just talking to humans again it's uh wears on a guy i was gonna say yeah it's uh it's a whole thing it turns out i had a I had a couple of buddies come into town who aren't who don't live here, so come into town visiting, and uh, so you try to get as much time in as you can while they're here. And boy, howdy, really, uh, really takes it out of you. Yeah, all that shaking hands—it's just exhausting. Slapping backs, oof. Yeah, all the I got tennis elbow from all the bro hugging. Yeah. Like it's, <laughs> ugh. I haven't had a good bro hug in a while. I'm, I'm, I think most of my friends that are willing to touch that much just go for a regular hug. <laughs> I'm, I'm good either way. I'm, I am a hugger, but, yeah. uh, but I'll take one. I'll take about any flavor of hug I can get. You give me yeah. a weird side hug, I'm fine with that. Even. I, uh, I've done a lot of weird side hugs. <laughs> That's. If, if, if they're not willing to lead the hug dance, they're, they're probably going to get a weird side hug. <laughs> it's weird yeah, hugging when you're a thir- two, you're like, everyone's a third of the size of you. <laughs> like, yep. I just don't want to, I just don't want to Lenny any of you. I don't yeah. want to like Lenny with the bunnies. I Tip don't want to. over and crush something. <laughs> yeah. Look, lose my balance and kill you. Oh no, I have one less friend. <laughs> oh no, my friend. <laughs> one of my shorter, skinnier friends just yeah. leads me out to a lake and puts one in my head. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, where's yeah. Marlon going? You're just waving all happy like a big dumb dog. <laughs> Can you see the farm, Marlon? Can you see the rabbits? <laughs> yeah, that's how that's how that'll probably go to one day. So, yeah. but you know what? And despite how hungover I was, and despite how sickly I was, you know what I managed to do? What's that? Managed to watch five episodes of The Simpsons this weekend. a boy. <laughs> yeah. I did that this morning. Ooh. Look at you bragging that you wake up in the morning. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I think you I know, woke up in the a.m. every day this week. You know, Nathan, that's not a brag for most people. We set the bar pretty low here at Folsom Buck Manor. <laughs> the bar is on the floor. Sometimes so low you can't trip over it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. I love that, hey, I got up in the morning every day this week is an accomplishment. Yeah. <laughs> and I'm not here to take it away from you, Nathan. You Good go. job. You did yeah. it. Even the rustiest horns need a toot now and then. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and we are oh, uh, we're in poetry. season twelve, right? That's a T-shirt, is what that yeah. is. Yeah. 
Uh, yes, we're uh, in season 12 we, of The that's, Simpsons. So we're going to monetize this with our inspirational posters and t-shirts. Yeah. A lot of, we're really going to bust into that, like, hang in there, kitten market. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> So uh, the first episode of The Batch today is episode 14, New Kids on the Block, as I'm assuming how that would be pronounced. Yep, I would assume so. So for some reason, Homer decides he wants to run a goddamn marathon because (laughs) Homer's doing dumb shit a whole bunch. (laughs) Because we need to start the episode somehow. True, very true. And, you ever, uh, uh, have you ever had the itch to compete in a running event, Nathan? Uh, you know what? Honestly, if I got good enough shape to even complete it and know that I wouldn't take last, I would. Because I am a fan of being a fat person doing better than something a skinny person's doing, if that makes oh, sense. Oh, sure. One yeah. time, I think the eighth grade, I don't know, like when you're in gym class, did you have to run the mile at the beginning of the year? That was always a thing we led up to. Uh, I got to run that mile. Got to run that mile. Yeah. And, it, I don't know that it was at the beginning of the year, but yes, yeah, we, like, we ran I a mile the in first gym. couple of weeks, you just got that horseshit done. And then we just played dodgeball and kickball for the rest <laughs> of the semester. It was pretty tight. <laughs> but I just remember, I think it was us. Uh, I took gym in the second semester. So the spring semester. So we were in the middle of basketball season at that point. And I remember they, oh, that was the best shape I'm going to be in. It's because I'm, you know, basketball practice every day after school. And I outran some of the skinnier kids in the mile, not by much. And they were, they were skinny <laughs> fat, probably, you know, like yeah. <laughs> just because you're skinny doesn't mean you're fit. You know? Soft like, skinny. Yeah. yeah. And I remember really taking pride in that. Like the fact that I was finishing up and like sitting on the edge of the stage and what, waiting for other kids to finish. I really felt good. I was like, oh, now I see why jocks are cruel. <laughs> <laughs> you got just a tiny taste of yep, it and you yeah. were an asshole <laughs> yeah. yeah so i was like you know what if i could get in good enough shape to beat some slims in a <laughs> in a five day <laughs> but i have also reached the age where my joints are disintegrating like everything <laughs> every time i move my knees it sounds like i'm crushing like a exotic bird's nest <laughs> like, like, like a big condor nest like something big a lot of a lot of solid, dry grass is getting crushed <laughs> oh somebody chewing a big mouthful of dry triscuits no nathan yeah, just got up, up off to, the couch yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, oh man so in the distance is there a fat man destroying wicker furniture <laughs> uh oh aging what fun yeah I had a buddy who got up got wild hair up his ass to to do a 5K once, and he was not the kind of dude who would ever do a 5K. But to his credit, <laughs> he did it and immediately crossed the finish line, went to his car, and was slamming Jameson out of the bottle, smoking a cigarette, oh, and being sick. like, "Oh, I shouldn't have done that." Oh God, drinking whiskey after exercising sounds so fucking gross. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, better than before exercising. Yeah, really. good, good point. But oh, I like I don't know if you've ever worked out with a buzz, but it's not a good time. Yeah, I like my my body has to be pretty placid before whiskey to get poured into it. <laughs> <laughs> pretty stationary. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> like I've never been. Yeah on a goddamn fucking mountain bike thinking you know what would really help this fucking event go more smoothly a seven and seven (laughs) (laughs) Uh, a a cup of room temp lord calvert (laughs) not a a lot of cup holders on mountain bikes but homer's running the marathon we get a few kind of just i don't know mediocre marathon type gags but then bart joins as an uh, italian man uh to doing the old join the marathon on the last 10th and win it uh yeah. scam which has been successfully pulled off before and then i think they were caught later on but it's something people have tried to do in the past and yeah just duck in at the last minute yeah but it is bart it is found out that he had cheated uh and he's he is saved from the punishment by LT Smash, uh, I believe his name is. He's a record producer. Yeah. Uh, LT sl- uh, is going through the uh, Springfield Elementary, and he selects Bart, Nelson, Millhouse, and is it Ralphie? Yeah, it's Fuck Ralphie. Yeah, it is. Yeah, to be members of his next hit boy band, the Party Posse. <laughs> 
<laughs> oh man and like the so you kind of get almost like a training montage of them learning how to sing and dance and there's a great Millhouse quote where he panically says, no one told me there'd be boasting, which, God damn it. <laughs> the way Mill, one of the few things that's improved with this show is just how fucking goofy Millhouse is now. Like, Yeah, Millhouse, like, as far as, as far as, his, his batting percentage is huge on dialogue. Yeah. Like, yeah. he's, yep. he's consistently funny every time yeah, he opens definitely, his mouth. Yeah. Uh, I just got to ask, even though I know the answer, did Carson, North Dakota, ever put out a boy band in your time growing up there? <laughs> did any plucky ranch kids get together and decide to form a sing and dance troupe? No, nope, no, nope, I don't believe so. No, well, um, that's we got chalk up a chalk up a W in the old record calling for Botno versus Carson because <laughs> oh god, really? We had one. <laughs> It had been like a great, the grades like three or four years older than me called the Motown Boys, which is comical considering wow. none of them have probably ever been to Michigan, let alone Detroit. Right. <laughs> the Motown what Boys. The fuck? And I can't remember if they, maybe they just danced. I, like they would perform it like the halftime of shit. And it was like the popular kids. It wasn't like a bunch of dorks that were getting laughed at. Like fucking girls fawned over them and shit. So like, fuck it. I mean, play on player, you know, <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> that's some outside it. the box thinking. But I just remember in my head, that like it's, it's a memory that's so fuzzy. All it sticks out is the, a lot of uh, oversized baseball jerseys that like, like the oh, Marlins or the Rockies, you know, <laughs> like, <laughs> the mid 90s was the sports jerseys uh, kind of moment in the sun as a fashion piece. Yes. Like, you could wear a baseball jersey to, like, your senior pictures, and no one would have batted an eye in 1996. Like, oh, that's, you look very nice in that <laughs> 4XL Tampa Bay Devil Rays jersey. <laughs> like, why, thank I you. I don't think I've ever worn a baseball jersey, but I do appreciate a short-sleeved button-down, so yep. maybe I oughta. Of all the sports jerseys, it's the one that probably fits me best. Like, I mean, like, fits my style best, like. Sure, yeah. I could see you rocking a hockey jersey, too. Like, Yeah, uh, you're a hockey. To God, hockey hides the fat. Hockey jerseys are designed to hide, hide man titties. If you look yeah. at the people wearing hockey jerseys, it is awesome. Often men with burgeoning young bosoms. Like, <laughs> there's, there's a reason that's all Kevin Smith wore for 15 years. Yep, very good point, yeah. And yeah, yeah, you're right. I kind of and fucking hockey jerseys were everywhere in the '90s too. I mean, I also grew up in like hockey country, so it makes more sense. But even in like pop culture, you would see it a lot. Well, fucking clerks, yeah, like just two random dudes in their twenties, both wearing hockey jerseys, hanging out. Like the downside of a hockey jersey, long sleeves, and I'm a sweaty boy. I run yeah. hot, so yeah. I think uh, I think maybe a baseball jersey would be for me. I could see you two just rocking a like a basketball jersey. I've owned basketball jerseys in the past, but I'm not. Uh, uh, the armhole is always too big. It, it, there's too much of a window. I don't need to be. I don't need to be They're sending everybody you. home with a bunch of a bunch of side boob at this yep. show. I don't need. To, I don't need that. Yeah. Uh, but uh, one thing that comes up pretty early on in this is that their their complete inability to sing doesn't matter. They just use studio magic to make their voices <laughs> sound like boy bands would sound. Yeah, the uh, and that's just what the machine is called, which yep. I liked. Yeah, uh, <laughs> yeah, just just auto tune, whatever you want to call it. They sing like they sing like a boy band does after that machine is flipped on. Yeah, and they. And they become, just because, again, they have 22 minutes to work with, they instantly become sensations. Like, there's no Mega slow hit. build. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I like that Principal Skinner is a fan. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> when you think about it, it makes sense. Like, they're corporate, inoffensive, you know, mass-produced. That's kind of his thing. He just doesn't want anyone to rock the boat. Yeah. But uh, Lisa, speaking of boats, holy shit, I didn't even mean to do that. But <laughs> speaking of boats, Lisa has figured out that these songs are subliminal messages to join the Navy. <laughs> <laughs> After is... seeing that ridiculous 
ridiculous music video. Yep. <laughs> which, when it starts uh, and has the little credits down in the corner, is credited as directed by Ang Lee. Yep. That was a nice touch. Yeah. Which I thought was funny. <laughs> uh, but yeah, that video is ridiculous. Yeah. Has Ang Lee put a movie out in the last several years? I've fucking Ang Lee's had some bangers, man. Boy, I don't know. Uh, yeah. His his Hulk is real bad. Oh no! Yeah, I forget he did a goddamn Hulk movie. Whose idea was that? <laughs> he did he did the bad Hulk movie. He did um, Crouching Tiger, Hid Dragon. Yep, yeah, he did Which, uh, uh, broke fucking back broke back mountain. Oh. Fucking the ice storm, which is fucking brutal, but like I mean, depressing, but an amazing movie. I don't know that one. I suppose Life of Pi would have been oh, for his God. last big Yeah, hit. but even that's that's an enjoyable movie. That's been probably God, especially that's getting close on ten years. He did an insane like three and a half hour movie called Lust Caution. I think it's like in Chinese. It's super, and there is some hard fucking scenes in it. Like, they are, I don't even know if it's, it probably got, like, released unrated here because it was never meant to make any money. It was like a, you know, Mm -hmm. prestige movie, you know, like, I am looking it up right now. Uh, It was rated NC-17 in the States. Oh, that doesn't Which, happen very often. No kidding. I didn't know that. Yeah, like that is pretty rare. Like, but I mean, and assures they, that it will make no money. Yep, but I mean, they go for it. <laughs> like, <laughs> they, 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 they did not get cheated on their rating. Like, I think you might see. Uh, I think you might see a little cooter in that if that's your thing. Uh, just a little. That sounds. Like, that sounds like a rapper. <laughs> yeah, little cooter. A little cooter. <laughs> He's he uh, plays out in the credits. It's a. <laughs> it's a little cooter remix. <laughs> I was unaware that this was Ang Lee, but he apparently directed that Gemini Man with Will Smith from a couple of years back, where. I think that might have been a Netflix movie, or it might have been a big, a uh, big oh. one. Uh, but like Will, uh, young Will Smith and old Will Smith. Yeah. It's like a. a effects jerk off film yeah, i never I forgot uh, all about that i never knew that was him well i'm, I'm I, sure like, he... he has plenty of movies that i like but yet when i see his name i think of hulk which is so bad huh said i don't even didn't even know he did that hulk movie yeah hulk is so bad that sam elliott was bad in it you know how bad a movie has to be to make <laughs> sam elliott be bad yeah it's got to just be a shit, like, like the, the waters already have to be poisoned if <laughs> if Sam Elliott isn't enjoyable in it. Yeah. Pretty decent, unhinged Nick Nolte uh, in that movie, though. Always so. enjoyable. God, sounds like it has a hell of a cast, if nothing else. Yeah, and I forget the name of the guy who played uh, Banner. but Ed uh, Norton? Eric Banna. That's oh, Eric Banna, yeah. Ed, no- Ed Norton is Hulk in The Good Hulk. But then he well, was replaced the with Ruffalo. Of the two. Yeah, then he was replaced with Ruffalo. What's the reasoning there, I wonder? Uh, from what I understand, Edward Norton is real hard to work with. So. Interesting, yeah. I don't huh. think he wanted to play ball with, uh, Marvel. with the rest of the Marvel movies, yeah. Oh, interesting, huh. So the boy bands are they're, they're the party posse is doing well, but Lisa is you know doing Lisa things, trying to get to the bottom of this, and she finally is able to kind of confront LT Smash, and it turns out he's actually named Lieutenant Smash, and he's actually a fucking Navy recruiter. So yeah, <laughs> it all comes together. <laughs> he just has an extra period taped to his nameplate on his desk. Yeah. <laughs> And I did enjoy that the Navy, the, like one of the higher up brass comes to visit uh, the LT and the uh, party posse. Until basically they are there to let LT know that they're going to cancel their boy brand, boy band operation when they find out Mad Magazine is going to spoof the party posse, which is such a great idea for like, we're going to pull the <laughs> plug on this multi-million dollar coercion campaign because Mad Magazine is going to make fun of the party posse. Yeah, there'll be no, there'll be no. No making it cool again after yeah. Mad Magazine takes it down. <laughs> so I think they're performing on an aircraft carrier at this point. Yeah. And LT, does he just throw the commanding officer off the 
off the ship something like yeah he he, he like pushes him overboard and takes the carrier the admiral uh turns off the the studio magic first so the oh uh, that's what it is they're revealed to be shams yeah Yeah. the crowd has turned on them then yeah (laughs) the crowd of fawning preteens and then yeah everyone everyone except the boy band and homer of course because he was in the bathroom or everyone else (laughs) escapes the carrier yeah (laughs) and uh lt is leading the carrier to new york city so he can blow up the mad skyscraper which i love the idea that mad has their own skyscraper skyscraper yeah skyscraper these words are hard (laughs) Scropper Scraper. Marlin, look at the top of that scrop scropper. <laughs> another great uh another great line out of Millhouse here when they're when they're getting to New York and he goes, Oh, there's the Statue of Liberty. Where are we? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> God uh, damn it. This made me think too, this would be the last pre nine eleven season of The Simpsons. Oh, sure. Everything yeah, after right. this would have been had the Stink of 9-11 on it. <laughs> no more. Uh, yes, the, the 9-11 stink. No more looking at the New York skyline and like, and like oh, yeah. like Now you're always like, you catch it now if you see something with the Twin Towers. It's like, oh, yeah, this was you made before that. You catch it here. That. They're, they're yep. here right, yep. after, right after he sees the Statue of Liberty. Yeah, you yep. notice it now. Now yep. you're like, it's oh, wild. there they are. So LT kind of accomplishes what he's looking to do. He blows up the Mad Tower, which mm. I, I got a kick out of. <laughs> And he is arrested, and he's he's pretty much lost his mind at this point. Yeah, he's not a stable man. <laughs> like, it's like LT. That's what the the armed forces is all about. You know, you got a huge project, they just take it away from you for some reason, and you just start something new. Yeah, go do something else, man. Well, he should not have made it through officers training academy. <laughs> he's not Navy material, Marlin. <laughs> That's about all I got for that episode. It was fine. Yeah, it's all right. Yeah. Some of those, I liked some of the uh, the marathon gags with like comic book guy dressed as the Flash doing the and of course the, uh, falls yeah. in a manhole. Yeah, <laughs> you know, yeah, little little gags like that. It was fine. It was all right. But and also, I just I and I am weirdly nerdy about aircraft carriers. I don't know what I, I just find them fascinating. They're just these little cities that just can float in the and they they have their own nuclear reactors, so they just create their own power forever. Like you could basically make a floating island. Like if you could get topsoil out there, like and grow shit. You can live on it for, <laughs> I don't know how fucking long, but a long goddamn time. Like, because you never would run out of energy. Like, it's such a weird, specific old man thing to be in, yeah. to, to oh, be nerdy is about. That, is that what I'm entering into, Marlon? Am I in my Tom Clancy phase? Oh, man. Oh, if you had I basic... wear aviators and, and a fucking build hat? <laughs> uh, I think you should. Oh, God. Do I got to get a fucking. Walmart rip off Adidas sweat track suit because I'm always <laughs> about comfort. I'm going to start getting into air shows. I think you need a like a a jacket made of like whatever whatever uh uh what's the fucking like burlap jacket or canvas jacket. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I'll know it's something I need to really discuss with like a therapist if I start really wanting to read Clive Cussler novels. <laughs> I think Clive <laughs> Cussler was the uh was the the uh, thinking man's Tom Clancy. <laughs> like, yeah. That's <laughs> Boy, I have friends who read Clive Cussler novels. Yeah, once you get into the Cussler and the Grisham and the Clancy, yeah, uh, arguably some of the Crichton, you're you've gone too far. God, you're, you're, you've truly embraced middle age. <laughs> if you had basic cable, what percentage would it be on the History Channel all the time? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> or when you make the decision to upgrade your package so you can get the sub channels of History Channel, because I I gotta have World War II documentaries twenty four <laughs> hours a day. <laughs> Oh man, yeah. What are you gonna What are you gonna do if you can't get a two hour in depth look at the Red Tails? Like, yep. oh no, <laughs> oh, Nathan, you're gone, buddy. <laughs> Had a good run. 
<laughs> you already think, oh, nobody calls traveling anymore. Yeah. So, <laughs> I, though, to be fair, I've thought that since I was like 17. <laughs> I've had old man basketball in my DNA for a long time. <laughs> yeah, that is true. Uh, episode 15 is Hungry, Hungry Homer. Uh, it starts off, the family is at a Lego theme park, or as they point out, Blockland, because it's not Lego. They, they make a joke <laughs> later about how it's not Lego, it's blocks. Uh some good gags where huh, everything is just everything is Lego. Homer even says when they're like floating down the 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 small world river in their boat. Oh, I get it. Everything is blocks. It's yeah. like yes, Homer. <laughs> I did like the visual gags of like even the river is blocks, and it's just he's just pulling out blue Legos and throwing yeah. them at Lisa, and then he <laughs> falls in when the security tries to throw him out. Uh, everybody gets some souvenirs they're on their way out of there uh, <laughs> one visual I liked is the idea of them disassembling Blocko Land every night after close like, <laughs> yeah into the overnight storage box yeah, yeah. <laughs> I liked Bart with his Lego shirt like oh, I, can't, I shouldn't have bought this t-shirt yeah <laughs> uh, Lisa got a little Lego Eiffel Tower uh, that was missing a piece so Homer flips a, flips a U-turn and takes him back to to get Lisa a refund or a replacement for her her missing piece. He confronts the souvenir guy who says, "You can't fight the souvenir industry. We're too powerful." <laughs> yeah, that was a good that was a good thing to throw in there. Yeah, I did like that. Uh, Homer convinces him, and he gets he gets Lisa her missing Eiffel Tower Lego part. Were you a big Lego kid? You know, my mom claims I was, but I must have been so little that I don't even remember it. So it had to be a pretty short period of my life. But no, the, the fucking short answer is no. <laughs> <laughs> Not that I remember, I, at least. Yeah, I'm more of an action figure kid. Yeah, same here. I, I had some and I had some some Lincoln logs, but uh, definitely gravitated more to the action figures for sure. Yeah. Uh, th and I think I think maybe Lego is a bit of a good indicator on what kind of person you're going to end up being. Yeah. Cause I had a cousin who's a year younger than me who was just like building fully functioning motors and shit out of Lego when he was like five. And now he does like some manner of advanced diesel mechanicry. I don't know. Like it's it. I did it. I didn't have the knack for it. And today can't fix shit. And yeah. Yeah. he did and can fix anything. So I think yeah. maybe Lego is a decent uh, a decent barometer. That's probably true, yeah. On, on the, how uh, well the... your kid is going to do in the STEM, in the STEM yep. uh, subjects. There's a lot, of, a, lot, a lot of Lego fanatics became engineers, I'm guessing. Yeah, not me. I was just slamming two ni plastic Ninja Turtles together. Yeah. I should have figured out how to have like Skeletor pull off a successful Frankensteiner on He-Man. Like, <laughs> eventually, my He-Man guys morphed into pro wrestlers. <laughs> yeah, they're all just fighting. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so now that Homer did his good deed and helped out Lisa to get her uh, her Eiffel Tower missing piece back, now he's like super into helping people. Like this that's just where he goes but, and he even says that's who i am this week which i laughed i love how in in springfield being a good samaritan just means that you're a fucking giant karen just bitching to customer service like that's <laughs> that's the that's what they consider like pure selflessness is just yeah. being a fucking asshole at customer service desks like yeah, I also laughed because that's just who I am this week is a fucking Fallout Boy lyric, which is a Simpsons reference in itself. Is it like the, fascinating? The whole the whole Uroboros just <laughs> oh the Simpsons made a reference that is act that's also a Fallout Boy reference, which is a Simpsons reference. Yeah, I, I enjoyed that. Uh. So Homer is out helping people. He goes undercover at school uh, to help Bart get a date with one of the creepy twins. Yeah. Uh, I liked Homer just with a backwards cap and a, a red and white <laughs> t-shirt pretending to be a fucking 10-year-old. <laughs> yeah. 
a 300 uh, pound 10 year old <laughs> he uh he goes to the uh the salon because they didn't honor marge's uh two free streaks coupon and she wanted her two free hair streaks oh my god which i will say this the timing of this this was the golden era of hair streaking was like 2001 ish (laughs) 98 to 2001 i'd say somewhere in there like did you ever get them tips frosted marlin Nope, never frosted them tips, Nathan. Never yeah. bothered. No, nope. yeah, your your hair is pretty frosted already, I guess. Right? You're probably pretty blonde when you were young. I'm a, so like a teenage boy. Yeah, golden like, tresses. Still am, still awfully blonde, uh, but I, was more so in my youth, especially when I was out in the f- fucking sun all the time. So, I, how about when you were a little kid? Were you one of those guys that almost had like white hair? I had some friends that were like that. Like, no, I don't think so. I think all my baby pictures, like it's it's blonde they're not baby pictures but younger photos uh it's it's blonde but not like shockingly so so yeah so you when your hair is already frosted you don't really need to worry about the tips no thanks god (laughs) thanks for frosting me (laughs) you had to go artificially frosted i assume yeah i i never got the tips frosted. i did get some streaks put in not a good move, Marlon. <laughs> not a good move. Did not have the right head for it or the hair. I could have seen you doing a uh, like a leopard print, like like you saw around occasionally, <laughs> like mostly blonde with black spots in yeah, it. Yeah, that over. was the, more the punk rock. Yeah, like I could have seen you going that route. Yeah, I don't. I don't think I had the confidence for that, but I appreciate you thinking that. But <laughs> I don't think I've ever. I don't think I've ever dyed my hair, like. I for sure did like temp like a temporary dive job once uh, to go see riffraff because it was an occasion. <laughs> so if you want to pause the podcast to go update your bucket list and put maybe <laughs> dye that hair on there, we can go right ahead. Uh, I should I should do it before it's gone because it's yeah. it's making a fucking break for it. Ooh, so is that, is that peninsula about to become an island? Oh man, yeah, we're we're approaching archipelago territory right now. <laughs> I've always found it fascinating with like people's some people's baldness pattern when there's the tuft in front that is now completely separated from the receding shoreline. Like, yeah, we're getting there. I just like that that little standing strong, like <laughs> the uh, asserting its independence. The two. The two C's I have are about to meet to form <laughs> one pale ocean. Like yeah. I, got, I have the bald spot in the fat in the back creeping forward, and the shoreline receding in the front. And before long, they'll they'll just be one. They'll just be one big spot. Yeah. But you seem like you have the head to handle it. Like, like I've mentioned on this podcast before, I start losing my hair. It's either wear a wig or live under a bridge. I will <laughs> not be able to function in society if I, like, I have a malformed, weird head. Every day I wake up and I weigh the options of just go out with dignity or fight it with science fight it. tooth fight and nail it with science oh <laughs> if you, i would do a fucking fundraiser for you to get outrageous hair plugs <laughs> just hair, fuck hair, pl- hair plugs have gotten better but they're not there yet <laughs> i think it's yeah one of the old chicago bears players got them i was like this fucking doesn't look half bad good for you <laughs> brian erlacher they uh they still uh, I remember, like, hair plugs in the 90s just straight up looked like doll hair. Like, those plugs, look, they looked like they were an inch apart. It looked horrible. <laughs> it's like it's like a garden, like, three weeks <laughs> after you planted. Yeah, it just looks like rows. Yeah, tend to the rows. That's what yeah. they call it. <laughs> That's not what cornrows is, guys. Yeah. Do you think... Is there like if you if you were to match up a graph of the quality of hair plugs and the quality of tit jobs or boob jobs, do you think they're kind of equal? Like they had a real rough start, maybe some hits and misses in the '90s, and then a pretty nice upward climb through the 2000s. Yeah, I bet uh, I bet the quality of both of those are are pretty hand in hand, steadily on the increase. There we go. Yeah. If I were a betting man. 
Get a peck enhancement and a hairline adjustment. <laughs> uh, Marlon, what did you do last week? I got new hair, new tits, Nathan. Thanks for asking. I'm picturing you with like white dreadlocks, like one of those weird twins from one of those Matrix sequels. <laughs> Real pale skin, tiny sunglasses, and like giant 80s steroid pro wrestler pecs. <laughs> <laughs> Everything else the same. I just just look like Jonathan Winters f- fucked up punch out character. <laughs> <laughs> punch out Edgar Winter. <laughs> Oh shit! <laughs> That's <a> weird. <laughs> That's some kind of fucking weird side level boss <laughs> beating up fucking B level seventies rock performers. <laughs> oh man, yeah, that might be a good look. And don't address anything else, leg toe. Yep. <laughs> don't bring in the gut or the thighs or anything. Nope. Just. Nope. Just big old square fucking man pecs. Yeah, NES 8-bit shock. graphic man tits. Yeah. And a shock of long white hair. Yeah. Oh, man. If we could only make these dreams oh. reality. <sighs> yeah, maybe we need to start a, start a GoFundMe for that. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, so Homer wants Marge to get her hair streaks because she deserves it. And I did like the turn this one took because he's really just like being an asshole, being a fucking Karen. And the guy's like, no, trust me, I'd, if she has so much hair, I'd be ruined. I can't afford to give her her free streaks. And it turns into Homer down in their basement, like doing doing their t- uh, their books, like going through their budget. And he finds the money for him so Marge yeah. can get her hair streaks. <laughs> Uh, we find out uh, we, we're, at the, we're at Moe's now and we find out I didn't know this and maybe it just comes up for the first time in this episode but Duff has purchased uh, the Springfield isotopes uh, Lenny's in the bar complaining about how bad they are and they're so bad uh, that Lenny wants to uh, wants a refund on his season tickets but of course they won't give them to him and homer being that this is the path that he's on uh this episode uh offers to help lenny out uh at one point lenny's like wait you want to help and carl just goes oh yeah that's new homer he's great Uh, so Homer marches down there to the, the isotopes. There's a fun bit of him being like, is that the owner's office? No, that's the, that's the equipment shed. (laughs) What about that over there? That's where we keep the water heater. What's the, well, how about that's a tractor? Like, that was fun. Uh, finally gets into the into the owner's office and uh, discovers that the owner is going to be moving the team to Albuquerque. He finds a uh, a whole room full of Albuquerque <laughs> isotopes merchandise, and of course it's Homer, so it takes him a second to put it together. Yeah, those gears turn slow. <laughs> uh, we get to hear Yellow's "Oh Yeah" when Duffman shows up. That song <laughs> yeah. always a treat for me. <laughs> Fucking Duffman entrances are so great. <laughs> I saw I saw Ferris Bueller at a very young age, so that song will always be the the song that plays when cool stuff happens. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> Like if if I could if I could have a song play every time I took the stage at these small town bar shows we do, it would be Yellow's Oh Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> I think you earned that. You deserve which, that. Which would confuse the patrons who already barely want to be there. Don't know there's a comedy show to begin with, and all of a sudden there's <laughs> '80s techno play. Yeah, but hell. <laughs> <laughs> that's not good by Earl <laughs> uh, the tough man stabs Homer with some manner of syringe to make him to erase Homer's memory uh, they they dump him at home apparently we get a fun little uh, 
just a fun, quick little Peanuts joke where Homer is sleeping on top of the doghouse and Bart comes out and says, good grief. I was like, ah, that's from the other thing. That's funny. Yeah. <laughs> Start clapping. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. If every time there was a reference on The Simpsons, I said out loud to a room full of no one. Oh, oh yeah. hey, that's from the other thing. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Just looking at your cat. <laughs> <laughs> Just pointing like, ah, look, huh? <laughs> Beetle Bailey, remember? <laughs> uh, Homer keeps trying to break the story, but Duff is covering it up. Uh, he decides he's going to go on a hunger strike, uh, which it's Homer, so you you don't figure that'll work. Uh chains himself up outside the arena and you know hi they're they're gonna move him to albuquerque nobody believes him but people are like paying attention to him uh and so since he's kind of popular they move him into the stadium out in the out in the not the outfield but what do you call yeah like the the berm i don't know what that is called out there yeah like yeah the 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 grass in the stands where there's no center field yeah yeah because they they don't they don't want fans in center field they don't want anything that could they they don't want to mess with the hitters uh batter's eye so they don't want they just want you ever notice center field is usually the wall is black so that's that's the reasoning oh I've never known that. I don't think I ever noticed that there's never stands in center field either. No, nope. center field's usually always open, and there's usually no advertising on the wall in front of center, like dead center. They want it to be black. Huh. And that's for the 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 batter's benefit? Yep. So nothing can no. distract them so they can see the ball coming out of the pitcher's hand. How do you feel about, uh, 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 like, waving and Interracial marriage? I'm for it, Marlon. It's 2021. <laughs> Get with the times. <laughs> You keep asking me off camera. <laughs> I give you the same answer. <laughs> okay. I'm an outlaw. <laughs> you really are. Uh, I remember uh, being young and watching an NBA Finals. It was definitely the Pacers and I think maybe the Bulls. If or they might be in the same conference anyway, uh, but the Pacers fans had what do you call the pat the swirly pattern like the hypnotized pattern? Oh, yep, yep. There were fans with Pacers colored those, and they would spin them when they were trying to make free throws. The other team was trying to make free throws, and I remember like partway through the series, the NBA said no, and they took all those away. Oh, fascinating. I did not know that. I uh, uh, Apparently, that was a bridge too far as far as distracting free throw shooters goes. Huh. I, f- that's funny. For as much of a basketball rube as I am, you think I'd have heard that story before, but yeah, like, and I get that, like, that, that's because I'm all about letting the crowd go bananas, but geez, that could really mess with another team's attempt to make, yeah, like, how dis- disorientating that is, like. Yeah, that was, I remember, like, the pregame, you know, the man on the floor uh, uh, during the pregame being like, yep, these have been banned after the last two games. They decided that this is too much. Huh, uh, interesting. I was curious how you felt about that. I was not going to ask you about interracial marriage again. Oh, but... okay. Good to know. That's, I've been worrying about that lately. It's like, oh, <laughs> I'll move this into a more serious direction. But I know some teams have, like, I think it's a, it was a Sacramento Kings thing. They were a fan of the boom sticks that they would hand out. Just like these, I don't know what they were, but just two little sticks you could clack together, make all sorts of commotion, which... I don't know, teach their own. I just find that to be low rent, you know, like I've, if I'm rooting for a dignified franchise, I want to want them to do something like that. Like I was, but, I was miffed when the Celtics got dancers and like a mascot. <laughs> like uh, that's the that one thing that kept them apart. You? Yeah. Like, cause at that time they were the only team that didn't have it. It's like, God, I, it f- infuriates me that they have all these horse shit alternate jerseys now that all look like fucking ass. It's like, what the fuck? You guys have the nicest jerseys <laughs> in basketball. Like, why fuck with that? Like, oh, the blandest, I, most boring jerseys in basketball. Yeah. Yes, oh, they did. Oh my God. This is, 
This is outrageous is what this is. I, I, don't, I, I can't explain j- fashion to you in this podcast. There's not enough time. But They haven't Celtics printed are- a new Celtics jersey since the 60s. Like, they all just look like shit. Oh, this is... It's so... I, I don't know if this is a if you're just trying to get build up viewership, but people are hanging up their laptops. If that's a possible thing right now, like enough is enough. I won't stand for this. <laughs> Let's the, see how those other Simpsons podcasts are. <laughs> the Celtic, the Celtics, like default green and white jerseys, have never once done anything for me. But it, oh. but it fits the team. It totally fits the fucking yeah. I would like lunch I would pail say, working man Boston fucking team. I would say the home whites, a little crispier. I do prefer them slightly over the road greens. But, yeah, I think they're both just so simple and perfect. I'm a big and fan I, of simple. Like, one of my favorite baseball jerseys, the Yankees road, the road grays. Mm-hmm. I just love the Yankees road grays. Just the like ones without the, the pinstripes? Yep. They're the bad guys coming to your town. <laughs> they don't have no names on the back, just the number. Fuck, I think that's a good look. Do you know where that came from? Wearing darks on away games? Oh, I have a hunch you're, you're going to know, and I am very interested. Uh, yeah, fun fun trivia fact. Uh, in the extremely early days of baseball, white, f- white was at home and darks were aways because you couldn't always have a place to do laundry on your away games. Oh, no shit. Really? That's interesting. Huh. Fun so you facts. can just have your road. It doesn't matter if your road roadies get all beat to shit because they're already dark to begin with. Exactly. It doesn't show huh. dirt nearly as bad. So if you're, you know, if you're the Yankees and you're playing in fucking Philly for three uh, for three games, you're probably going to wear those same ones every day and you probably aren't going to have a chance to do laundry. So, huh? No it shit. Won't, it won't show dirt as bad. That's, and, you know, not a worry today, but it was in the 20s for sure. And I... I still love that. That is a tradition that I think has pretty much been uninterrupted. Mm-hmm. Like, obviously, you know, you don't have to wear a white jersey at home, but oftentimes you'll have a colorful jersey, but usually your pants are white or a majority white. And if you're on the road, your pants are usually going to be gray or a majority gray. It's like, so that's pretty neat. And it's, uh, it's kind of backwards in football. Football usually the bright, the brights and the darks are for at home, and the whites are for away. Some teams yep. do it backwards. Dallas wears white at home. The uh, the NBA was white at home colors on the road, but they just recently switched that once Nike got the jersey contract, which. We don't have enough time for me to get salty about that. <laughs> we don't have we don't have enough time uh, for me to rave how much I love how many alternate jerseys there are uh, and how cool they all are. I don't mind it for the other teams. Go right ahead. Just I think the Celtics. Some, just the Celtics. <laughs> when you have a timeless look, don't fuck with it. Some Celtics fans are salty about them not wearing all black shoes at home anymore. Used to be the Celtics only could wear black sneakers. And I'm like, yeah, you know what? I'm a little bit of a freewheeling. <laughs> let, let the kids wear the shoes they want. Oh, freaky, Everything hippie, else. liberal Nathan Volsabach. Yeah. Everything else has got to stay like it did in the 40s, but they can wear their <laughs> funny sneakers. <laughs> let them have that. Yeah. yeah. As, it's wild how stuff, like, I think the Yankees still have that facial hair rule and no yeah. long hair. I was That's, just about to say, as a Yankees fan, I hate the facial hair, long hair Yankees rule. Yeah, that's so weird. In, a, in New York City, of all things, you know, like. Yeah. That maybe sounds like it'd be like a Texas or like Middle America team rule, you know. Like, yeah. But nope. Whereas New like. York. <laughs> And meanwhile, the football team in Dallas, they can snort horse tranquilizers on live TV as long as they're still winning games. They're pretty freewheeling. Uh, yeah. Jerry will pay for it. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> He'll pay the vet bill. <laughs> I was watching a basketball game here the other day, and I was watching a Clippers game, and they were wearing the uh, the blacks with, like, the old English font. And those were those were pretty rad. I was like, okay. I'm pretty into that. Well, good. It I'm happy. It doesn't read Clippers at all. It looks like a fucking Brooklyn jersey. Yeah. And then yeah, and I'm, I don't even know. I'm sure if I'm a fan of that on for playoff games. 
But I, I, yeah, I am. I am I'm all about other teams having silly jerseys as much as they want. That is, I, and I do like. I like it when a an odd. I'm a bigger fan of the throwback. I love seeing the Jazz playing the old style Jazz uniforms and shit like that. But the yeah. Celtics don't really have throwbacks because they haven't fucking changed it enough. <laughs> the changes are so subtle. It'd be like, oh, that font. The, the, the C is three mm-hmm. inches as opposed to three and a half. Like, oh, it has <laughs> one additional stripe on the shorts. <laughs> yep. <laughs> that Red Arbuck threatened to quit when they did it, so they removed it the next season. <laughs> My favorite alternate in the NBA is the neon Miami jerseys. Those are fucking rad. Yeah. And I like the, one of the two. Yeah. I like the powder blue Lakers jerseys, the Minnesota Lakers colors. Yeah, that's a good throwback. Damn right. That's a very. I like when they bring out the old Minneapolis Lakers jerseys. Like. But yeah, the, the Celtics up until I think they, I'm trying to think if they waited for Red Arbach to die or if he was just so infirm that he couldn't go to the media and lose his mind. <laughs> they were uh, they were late into the game of having like halftime entertainment. It was just organ music for half an hour. You went up to use the bathroom or get a snack, and you sat back down. And then it was basketball time. There was never a mascot or a dancer as long as Red <laughs> Arbach had any control over the team. Had to like be his, serious his, business. Yeah, his his quote was something like, "Leave that clown shit for Barnum and Bailey." Oh <laughs> like, my yeah. god! <laughs> like, the other teams can have that. We win championships here. <laughs> then, then, we just <laughs> we just want a guy in a furry suit with a big head. We're not asking. Yeah. We're not asking for lions <laughs> and cocaine at halftime. Meanwhile, yeah. half your players are starting cocaine in the locker room at halftime. Yeah, but yeah, towards the end, at least of the in the seventies. They had Marvin Bad News Brown or Barnes, who pretty sure he did cocaine while on the end of the bench on a forgettable <laughs> late 70s Celtics team. And oh, the, the balls that takes. And, yeah, no shit. He put a towel over his head and they, one of the other guys like, what the fuck is Marvin doing? Because he said like <laughs> all the rest of us just kind of scooted away. Like, hey, he is going to get in all sorts of trouble. We don't want to <laughs> act like we're involved in this. Like. Uh, what a bunch of fucking rats. Nobody stood up and like stood in front of him like go for yeah. it, Marvin. Like, yeah. <laughs> I'll run I'll run interference here. Yeah. I think they all saw the direction he was going. It's like, you know what? <laughs> it's best right now to just have a clean break. <laughs> Wait, am I maybe an enabler? Would, yeah. would yeah. I handle that wrong? <laughs> yeah. So yeah. <sighs> But you know what? And then they had a time when they only wore green shoes. Could you imagine trying to tell today's NBA player, hey, you got to just wear green shoes if you play for <laughs> us? <laughs> yeah, fuck that. Let me, let me tell my Nike that I can only wear green shoes. Oh, what's mm-hmm. that? Go fuck yourself? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Out there buying whatever shoes you do like and spray painting them green yeah. on your on your off days. I, I think the black shoe thing went well, well, but into the nineties a ways. You look at like early '90s Celtics footage. I think they're all wearing. I mean, it's not like they have to be solid black. They don't have to be like the shoes that like waitresses wear, that like the non-slip surface. Like, <laughs> but like, yeah, they all like with a little bit of white flourish. But they almost for the most part they're all black. Boy, this NBA fashion podcast. Holy is, yeah! It's, uh, you know, really I can't wait till next off. year. We're gonna do a whole episode on headbands, <laughs> the resurgence of headbands in the early two thousands. <laughs> How Ray John Rondo would get in trouble for wearing his upside down because then the logo As protest. Was, is, yeah, yeah. Good on him. Fuck him. Fight the power, yeah. Ray John. Yeah. <laughs> One thing, I holy shit, I think I was going to get into this and then we went on a 20-minute tangent about <laughs> basketball jerseys. But I was going to mention, while Homer was outside doing his hunger strike, uh, Edna and Skinner were on a little ice cream date. <laughs> and I, I know what you're going to bring up. And our boy Skinner <laughs> made the first move because she mentioned that ice cream's going right to her thighs. And Skinner was like, not if I can beat it to it or something like that. And Maybe fucking, it'll have company. Hell you know, of a line. Like, I was our like, hell little yeah. little boy is growing <laughs> up and I am pleased as punch. <laughs> Oh, this ice cream will go right to my thighs. Well, maybe it'll have company. I was like, oh, yeah. shit. Look at him go. Oh, God man. That, damn. My heart soared. <laughs> Good for him. 
Yeah. <laughs> uh, Homer's been out in the out in the center yeah, field area for a while now and is not doing so hot yeah. uh, i loved when ralphie and uh chief wiggum are looking at him his tummy sounds angry daddy <laughs> uh chief wiggum that's a stomach eating itself <laughs> yeah <laughs> he's wasting away out there i think his sign says like day nine or something so he's been at it a while yeah. looking real disheveled uh and the Duff people uh, go cut him loose and bring him into the infield and replace him with paint drinking Pete. Oh, fuck. I <laughs> laughed. Damn it. I laughed. How I just love how quickly it turned. He drank all that paint so fast and immediately got violently ill. Like, yep. <laughs> immediately just convulsing. Yeah. Uh, they, they bring Homer in and make a big to do about you get to have a uh one of our new isotope hot dogs and he's he like slowly puts together that it's like wait a minute mango salsa (laughs) diced jalapenos these are southwestern ingredients (laughs) and blows the lid off of them moving the team to albuquerque it was i i laughed heartily (laughs) yeah like the gears turning like like this is like some kind of like drama like like a mystery uh (laughs) wait a second (laughs) and uh he pleads with duff man to 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 do the right thing and duff man throws the owner out and homer's the hero uh, because we're not moving the team to albuquerque and then we end uh with the mayor of albuquerque who's like like maybe the real villain in all of this he's like yeah oh they're not gonna sell me the isotopes like well call up how much how much for the dallas cowboys and his secretary goes uh that's a football team he goes I'll, they'll play what i tell them to play yeah. <laughs> because i'm the mayor of albuquerque yeah, like, yeah, the real ominous music as the yeah, camera fades <laughs> looking out his window with that outstanding turquoise eagle bolo tie yeah i thought that catch your eye it did yeah. love me a bolo tie so yeah, I that, uh, that wraps up that one. I enjoyed that episode. I was just gonna say this might be my favorite of the bunch. I really got a kick out of that episode. Yeah, I liked it. All the <laughs> all the Homer food gags, all the all that Lego shit at the front was super funny. Yeah, this is a this is a good one. Yeah, I liked it. And it led to us talking about fucking NBA jerseys for yep. twenty minutes <laughs> somehow. Our next episode is episode 16, Bye Bye Nerdy. Uh, Starts with the kids being bullshit kids, as kids often are in the morning. But Marge, (laughs) she does not take any sass as a mom. She gets those kids ready as quick as she can. I like some of those visual gags, like the holding both of their heads and brushing their teeth simultaneously was good. Like, Yep, that was a good one. I liked her just cramming food in their mouths at the breakfast table. Yep. Uh, yeah, yeah, like, they're not done eating, like... They're like, whatever it is, that she's like shoving a whole thing of grapes into one of their mouth. Like, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. They actually get dressed in each other's clothes. I like that. That was and, a fun visual gag, seeing Bart in Lisa's dress. Yeah. That was funny. <laughs> but they still miss the bus, but Marge, again, relentless, gets into a high-speed chase with uh, Otto. <laughs> <laughs> Which I enjoy that. <laughs> like, they're like driving the, through, like, the city's aqueduct river. Like, like, like something yeah, they do, like, a T2, T2 thing. Yep. <laughs> yeah, the L.A. River scene from T2. Yep. And then, yeah, and I like to fucking Millhouse. It's like Speed 2, but with a bus instead of a boat. <laughs> <laughs> and I haven't noted here. Have you ever seen Speed 2, Marlon? Fucking A, I have. That, like, uh... and I saw it when it came out, so I wasn't aware of how terrible it was. And, like, it's funny. I remember thinking as a kid, I was like, Jesus, that was bad. Like, was that just me or was that terrible? And now I find out that movie has, like, cult standing as a truly terrible movie like it's like okay my radar wasn't off that movie was as bad as it fucking seemed like i need to go back and watch it because i haven't watched it since i was probably 13 and i thought it was fucking great so (laughs) oh yeah man you read about it it was it was a very rushed project (laughs) 
And uh, and the the shame of it is, I like Jason Patrick, and I think I wish he had more big budget action type roles because I want that guy to have some money because he's he's provided me a lot of happiness with his quality acting in his life. I forgot he was even in it. I just think of Willem Dafoe when I think of that movie. Yeah, there was a a lot of cash and checks and getting through it as quickly as possible. (laughs) That might be the first Willem Dafoe movie I ever saw. Oh, man. I don't know. I think I saw... I certainly wouldn't have... I certainly wouldn't have seen Platoon at that age. My Aunt Cheryl rented Platoon one time, back when you would still rent a VCR. We watched Platoon at her house, me and my cousins, at way, way too young of an age. (laughs) She was also the aunt that rented us Texas Chainsaw Massacre for my cousin's six-year birthday party. Poof. Aunt Cheryl, if if you asked, (laughs) she would provide, and you would have to suffer the consequences. Which for me meant just not sleeping for a 72-hour period because I thought <laughs> Leatherface was going to burst through my closet doors. <laughs> With a chainsaw, yeah. yeah. <laughs> my, mom, my mom kept a, a pretty tight leash on, uh, on yep. content being watched. Same here. Like, Well, I think I've discussed it early on. When I was like six, she didn't. Because I don't think she knew that things on HBO were unedited. So that's how I got oh, to see she some... thought it was just like the rest of TV. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. That's how I got to see like aliens all the time when I was a little kid. And I got to see all sorts of gnarly shit. And then finally she realized that. And then we moved out in the woods where there isn't cable TV. <laughs> and then <laughs> my mom worked at the one gas station you could rent movies from. So she had a pretty tight ironclad grip on what movies we watched. <laughs> <laughs> the only rule in our house was if we could convince dad to rent something R-rated. That was He had the veto power. It's like, please rent Predator, please rent Predator, please rent Predator. <laughs> I go to see Predator, yes! <laughs> we also watched Unforgiven a lot as a family, which, tremendous movie, but not really sit-down popcorn fun, you know? <laughs> no, that's not a fun it's time a movie at all. very, very bleak movie. <laughs> Good-ass movie, though. Oh, that my is God. a solid one. Is it ever, though? Yeah. I'm a, I'm in the tombstone camp as far as because I those two get pitted against each other a lot in the best westerns category. Oh, and I th- I'm in the tombstone camp. I think but. I think Unforgiven is definitely the better movie, but I think Tombstone's the more enjoyable movie. If that makes sense. Yeah, that's my that's my mafia movie argument because I understand that Godfather is better, but but I like Goodfellas better. Yeah, I oh yeah, I could totally see that argument. Yeah, like same thing, but like or even if you replace Godfather one with Godfather two, Godfather two is an amazing piece of art, but it's like fucking three hours and forty five minutes long. It just fucking, <laughs> it's just a, it's like it's like a, a it's like a novelization that's like word for word. Like they didn't edit anything, you know. Like I mean, it's a hell yeah. of a story to hear, but it's like sometimes I just want to watch Joe Pesci get fucking stomped to death. I want to watch Ray Liotta be on cocaine. Yep. Yeah. Like, God. You know, it's all, of, of that era of Scorsese movies, it, for some reason, it took me forever to see Casino. Fucking A. I, for me, Goodfellas isn't that much higher up, like, on the list of awesomeness than uh, Casino. I think Casino's fucking great. Casino is super fucking good. I think I think the I think the gap between Casino and Goodfellas is bigger for me than it is for you, but it is fucking good. I think for me a lot of it is I have just a sucker for mob control era Vegas aesthetic. Uh-huh. Like that Vegas sounds way more appetizing to me than modern Vegas is. Like we have, <laughs> That's why you're a Reno boy. Yep, yeah, we've discussed my disdain for modern Vegas. <laughs> The fuck are these people smiling so much for? So the uh, Marja is able to get the kids to school and, and back at the Simpson household. I want to mention something. I do kind of like, and they occasionally nod towards it in the show, how willing they are to just have Homer not go to work or Bart yep. not go to school. <laughs> I hear a lot of that now. Like, yeah, like there was that episode. I forget what they were. Oh, when they were... When Bart and Homer blew up that fucking watermelon with yeah. fireworks a few a few episodes ago, and just like I love our Tuesdays together, <laughs> yeah. like neither of you are at school or work. <laughs> yeah. What the fuck? 
Yeah. There's another one, too, where it's like, aren't you supposed to be at school? Aren't you supposed to be at work? And they just kind of yeah. acknowledge it and move on. <laughs> yeah. But, we don't see Homer at work very often <laughs> anymore. <laughs> but uh, Marge and Homer are enjoying a day, a day to themselves. But then a, a very aggressive saleswoman comes to the door to convince <laughs> them that, that their house is not baby-proof. <laughs> Yeah. She's very intense and uh, goes through and shows them all the things they could do. And Homer's buying it right away because uh, he Homer's adult when it comes to money. But she quotes him a price that is apparently obscene enough for Homer to just throw her off the premises. Like, <laughs> Yeah, not having it. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, he quickly realizes, hey, I think I could just do this on my own. And we get an insane scene where he's trying to <laughs> safetify the house. Wait. Nail gunning pillows to the corners, and Maggie shoots him multiple times with a goddamn <laughs> air nailer. Laughing the whole time. I was just not shooting her dad with a nail gun. For the violence of that. Like, I have a weird thing with <laughs> fucking with hands. I don't like it in horror movies. Like, so people get oh, really? nails through the hands bugs me. Like, like that. I think it's, uh, god damn it. Uh, Pan's Labyrinth. There's that guy getting tortured, uh-huh. but, and he gets like. Down the middle of his hands, cut like from yep. between his ring and middle finger. Like Jesus! Like even thinking about that gives me the fucking willies. Like for for me, it's eyes and teeth. But yeah, yeah, yeah. The uh, some or is it sniper where they twist off his finger with the piece of wire? Yep, yep. You're right. Twist yep. off his finger, his trigger Ooh, finger. Yep. Holy shit, a sniper reference. Bravo, Marlin. That's fucking. You're t- welcome. Tom Berenger, some of his finest work. We have mentioned. And Billy Zane. Billy Zane? Oh my God. I love Billy Zane. I think he, I don't understand why he got demoted to B list actor so early in his career. Like. Yeah, dark haired, handsome man who just never, never was on the poster. Yeah, you know? I don't get it. Yeah, like Tom. We have mentioned two Tom Berenger movies in the last half hour. That and Platoon, you know, like Platoon is oh, right. got to be his yeah. finest. Where he's terrifying in Platoon, like. I mean, if you asked me, his finest work is Minor League. Yeah, yeah, Major yeah. League. Yeah, Major League. Yeah, he is good, Major League. Yeah, but uh, yeah, but he is as like the I don't even know what his title is. I think he must be a sergeant of some sort. But like, he is so terrifying in Platoon, like. That big gnarly face scar, like Jesus, yeah. Mm-hmm. Like I, I could stand a rewatch Platoon. That's a goddamn good it's, movie. It's been a long time. Yeah. So, they <laughs> Homer is now very, very injured. <laughs> Got nails through the hands. <laughs> she like gets him in the hands, like shoots him in the ears to pin his head to the wall. Like yeah. he, Homer gets fucked up. Yeah. <laughs> so, fucking. Well, Homer now realizes that baby safety is a priority. It kind of gets his entrepreneurial wheels turning. That kind of becomes the that the, the adult storyline is Homer now starting his own baby-proofing business. Yeah, and some of those visual gags very funny. Yep, like a lot of a lot of bubble wrap and a lot of <laughs> like. So, and he's again when he gets his mind on something, he really he really goes at it full bore. So he's really getting a lot of work, doing a hell of a job around town, making. Everyone, all the babies, super safe, and kind of. I would say more. That's more of the B story. I'd say more of the A story is uh, there's a new kid in the school, and they're all looking at her, and you know everyone's dismissive of the new kid, you know. But Lisa, being Lisa, decides, hey, I'm gonna say hello, and she's immediately punched in the face for her efforts, <laughs> and then it, and then it just keeps amplifying, like more and more and more. Like this bully is ridiculous, like. I like that she's kind of drawn like a female Nelson. Like yeah. she's so much bigger or, than all the other kids. And she's like, she's almost like she's like fucking borderline feral. Like her, yeah. she's like her <laughs> eyes are wide set apart and motionless. And like, just, she's really fucked. She barely talks. Like really fucking weird. Like, so Lisa realizes she's got a goddamn problem on her hands. So she's trying to get to the bottom of why bullies pick on nerds. And yeah. she discovers, or she has a theory that it's they can sense through smell. 
like nerd pheromone or nerd sweat. <laughs> <laughs> that that image of her, or that scene of her with the nerds on the stairmasters as she's collecting yep, sweat was pretty funny. Yep, and uh, uh, what's the not Millhouse, but the other one, Martin. Uh, Martin is Martin. dismissive at first, but once he hears Lisa's findings, he becomes a very pro study. So he's you know, he can drain every ounce of fluid out of that young boy. He wants to help <laughs> the good fight. <laughs> I really liked uh, before when she goes to the male bullies asking for protection. Yep. They're they're <laughs> under the bleachers and yeah. have Martin tied like with his ankles, <laughs> hanging him upside down underneath the bleachers, pelting him with tomatoes. Yeah. <laughs> Something, something about hanging underneath the bleachers yeah. was extra for How me. How much littler he is than them, too. Like, he's so yeah. tiny. <laughs> and also, before this, I think we're 12 seasons in. Is this the first time we see Wendell talk? Boy, if it's not the first one, it's one of the first ones. And- and sticking in character, he, he talks because he actually threw up and he had to say, I'm sorry, in a sickly voice. And, and uh, groundskeeper yeah, Willie was cleaning it up. And... With a barrel full of sawdust. Yeah. <laughs> I can, like, I haven't been around, like, janitorial vomit sawdust in fucking probably 20 years. Yeah. At least 25 years. And I can smell it. Yep. As soon as I saw it, I was like, I know that smell. Yep. immediately i can totally i don't yep. think i don't think i was ever the culprit i don't think i yeah, ever barfed I in school pretty ironclad stomach as a child yeah we had a couple we had a couple sickly kids in my class yep. who there would was occasionally a few, like that were, yeah. were out of school all the time too or leaving early all the time oh, looking back i wonder if that was maybe some mental illness stuff or if they really were that sick yeah who knows i i'm not sure but we yeah. definitely had a couple girls in our class that were frequently uh getting the sawdust out yep with guys it was more there's a couple of frequent nose bleeders i remember that a lot <laughs> like, oh shit it's happening again <laughs> uh, here we go uh, tip it back tip yeah, it back yeah <laughs> uh so lisa now has her uh nerd sweat sample ready and she goes to test it by uh checking out uh dedrick tatum aka mike tyson is speaking yep. to the older kid class, Bart's class, uh, some kind of Lyceum type thing. And uh, Lisa walks in and asks uh, Tedrick Tatum if she could spray him with nerd sweat, which he's very receptive of when he when he hears it's for science. And how about fucking Edna, of course, wants to give Dedrick Tatum a ride home. That yep. woman is insatiable. <laughs> <laughs> I I love Dedrick Tatum's response. He's just like, trust me, you don't want that. Yeah. What? I was like, wow. It, that is ominous. <laughs> 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 that, that's, it it will be it will be rough. Yeah. Like <laughs> I know what you're asking for, yeah. but for your own sake, <laughs> I'm not going to give it to you. Yeah. <laughs> I laughed real hard at that. So, and after being, uh, the spray is applied to Dedrick, uh, Nelson is <laughs> compelled to go attempt to bully him. And I do like the, yeah, that was a great game. Like him crying, saying, I'm sorry, as he's giving him a wedgie, like he's <laughs> compelled by this otherworldly power. <laughs> yeah, he's like punching Tatum, just been crying, oh, please don't hurt me. Yeah, and then finally, yeah, it is to Dedrick just rolling his sleeves up. He's going to beat up a child. <laughs> <laughs> So, uh, uh, so Homer flashing over to him, he is again, killing it in the baby proofing biz, but he finds out there are unintended consequences. Uh, he is putting all of the <laughs> injured baby market <laughs> into shambles. I don't know. Uh, a one baby crutch goes out of business. <laughs> yeah. We're not selling any cartoon yeah. band-aids. Yeah, the uh, baby, uh, the baby get well soon card factory has to shut down. <laughs> Yeah, and I love they show all the workers yeah. just Covered leaving. In their, yeah. yeah, they all look like coal miners. Yeah. God, that was funny. So he realizes maybe he has to bow out of it for the for the betterment of Springfield. Yeah, and then, get out of the baby-proofing business. Yeah. And then we get 
uh, now Lisa is confident enough in her results that she there's some kind of scientific consortium in town discussing God knows what, and she tries out the the nerd spray and and again the new bully girl is like a goddamn wild animal. They have her in a cage, <laughs> and true to form, Lisa's her research sticks and because the the bully is charging her and charging her, but. Once the nerd smells off her, she doesn't know what to do. But you can put that nerd spray on anything else. So that, there really isn't any change in anything, though. <laughs> like, no, like, like she she figured it out, and that's it. You know, <laughs> and, and then it just ends with the bully girl demolishing all of these adult scientists that are nerds. <laughs> yeah. And she's yep. enraged by their nerdiness. Yeah, and that wraps that one up. <laughs> Not quite as good as the last episode, but maybe my second favorite of the batch. Yeah, I dug that one. I thought it was good. Yeah. Not, uh, not, not the strongest Lisa one, I don't think, but uh, but it was it was good. Yeah, I'd especially say so too. especially good for now, like good for season twelve. Yeah, yeah. hell yeah. Um, number seventeen, possibly my favorite one of the whole batch. Oh my is, god! Yeah. My note for this one is, fuck me, this episode was weak. <laughs> wow. <Yeah>. Okay. <laughs> well, let's talk yeah, it out. Let's get here. We're going to hash it out. We're, we have 53 <laughs> episodes of problem-solving skills. Problem-solving skills. <laughs> Words are hard. And <laughs> we've been here before. This is our first disagreement, Rodeo. Um, I will say, I think... Uh, that this one is my favorite. I, I will say I don't think it's the funniest one, but I think the the story writing is very good in this one. Uh, uh, Simpson Safari is the name of episode seventeen. Uh, the Simpsons, or at least uh, Homer and the kids, are at the grocery store uh, buying groceries. Homer says, "If your mother wasn't so fancy, we could shop at the gas yeah, station like normal good. people," which I really liked. I, I'm surprised. I didn't know Costco was big enough in 2001 to kind of like ha- make fun of them. Like, apparently, that's a reference that the world was expected to get. I guess. I'm sure. I'm sure North Dakota is pretty low on a department store's list of priorities as to where to, where to locate. But I had no clue that Costco was that, uh, you know, everywhere in in two thousand two thousand one. Is this meant to be a Costco? Yeah, I guess it, I just read it as a grocery. It's store. It's called Costmo Foods, and it has the same kind oh, of font. So it's, okay, it's I a, didn't even catch that. The uh, I like that the kids are fully taking advantage of stupid homer yeah. being like oh i need i need these cupcakes for science class for and cupcake bar- class yeah and and just making up lies for why they need this junk food uh bart just casually walks up with a gallon jug of wine and says i'm out of wine and gets a bottle of wine uh and then eventually they just start coming to the cart with junk food being like we need uh uh, whatever, and they just throw it in the cart. So we have Homer pushing two carts full of garbage food. Um, Marge isn't there because she is at Dr. Hibbert's because uh, Maggie <laughs> swallowed a Time magazine. Which I just thought that was too ridiculous. Like, I mean, you know, I love me some Maggie, but it's like, I don't know. You know, it's, it's weird what things are too silly for me in a show that's pure silliness. But for some reason, this... This that that one did it for me too. Like it's like, eh. but like, I loved all of the Costco shit. Like, cause I am a bag boy. I know the plight, or I was a bag boy. I know the plight of the bag boy. I wish <laughs> we would have had the wherewithal to unionize like these brave souls yeah. did. <laughs> I like that. Uh, like, I like the Maggie swallowed a magazine bit just because it gives us the joke of March going. It was a Time magazine. I don't know if that matters. Yeah, yeah, that was good. That's yeah. really funny. So, yeah. uh, we go back to the to the grocery store. Everyone's being super shitty to the bag boys. All of the customers are awful. Yeah, just to like the, the bag whole boys. place. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, Agnes and Homer. I forget who else we see another example oh, of someone Mo. being garbage. Yep, it's Mo, I think, yeah. Oh, is it Mo? Yeah. They're, and the bag boys have enough, and they fucking <laughs> kick over the groceries and unionize. And so they're, they're on strike. And now, like, 
Like no one can get food. <laughs> like Lenny goes, Lenny goes and buys food and is just carrying a double armload of food. And when he gets to his car, they like have a long pole that they knock it all out of his hands with. <laughs> now we have the Simpsons at home with no food. I like Other how than, quickly it escalated from yeah, like to now. Yeah, they're the starving. entire city is starving. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Homer like Homer finds some random stuff in the cupboards one of which is a can of cream of toast soup <laughs> yeah. which I thought was very funny yeah <laughs> uh the dog uh Santa's little helper is on to something he can smell food he goes running up into the attic and we find an old lunchbox of Homer's and inside it is a box of animal crackers from the 60s yeah <laughs> uh it reminded me that I love animal crackers they and have not had animal crackers in a long time. A unique treat. Yep. Like, I don't think I could eat them on a regular basis, but like the once every six months, a guy would get a thing of animal crackers. And my mom would occasionally grab my brother and I a, a box of those animal crackers with all the animals painted like around the box. Like, like it was just yeah. kind of like, a, hey, you know, this is 50 cents and it'll make the kids happy for a little bit. Like. Yeah, it looks like a uh, circus train car. Yep, yeah, yep, exactly. With the, and it had the little string, just like they show in this episode. Yeah, it's a fun little treat. Yeah. <laughs> um, uh, Homer, like, blows the dust off, starts eating them. Marge, of course, protesting. Like, those are made in the 60s. What are you doing? <laughs> And one of the animal crackers is made of gold. He found the golden giraffe, and he reads on the side that that means that he wins a vacation to Africa. So he takes it to uh, takes it to the makers of the of the cracker company, and they're like, "Yeah, we're not gonna honor this. This is from fifty fucking years ago." And uh, in the, somewhere in the discussion, uh, they poke Homer in the eye with the box, and they don't want to get sued. So the family's going to Africa. <laughs> I like that they answer the obvious question of why would any company honor this yeah. by doing having that scene. Uh, so we get the family to Africa. They have a tour guide uh, whose name I'm forgetting, uh, but they uh, get to stay in like a uh, in a treehouse hotel, which seems pretty cool. And they're seeing all the sights. I like that we get some just baffling sight gags with the wildlife, like a rhino hatching yeah. and a giraffe burrow sticking its head out of a burrow. Yeah, I, yeah, I got a kick out of that. Um, we run off some poachers that were trying to steal a cheetah, and Homer's unimpressed by the fossils because he's like, I have more bones than that. That's not impressive. And then they're partying with the tribe and Homer in the in the midst of banging away on all their bongo drums slaps a hippo on the ass which launches a hippo attack on the uh on the village. Uh the Simpsons managed to escape by taking off on a canoe or or a big shield that they just use as a canoe one or the other I couldn't really tell. And so they end up lost in the uh, lost in the jungle. They go over the falls on the canoe. They land in a giant flower, which of course like swallows them and eats yeah. them. And then Homer <laughs> rips through the side of it, and the family just walks out. And Lisa's like, "Wow, Dad, how'd you do that?" And he just goes, "It's a flower." Yeah, which, which I thought was very funny. Yeah, and just some yeah dumb guy logic that makes all the sense in the world. Like, oh wait a second, like. <laughs> Yeah, this is just a flower. Is, we can just tear this open. We're surrounded by petals. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I like that. Uh, they come across a uh, a chimp refuge, uh, like a Jane Goodall, Jane Goodall style. Yeah, yeah. yeah uh, I think hers was gorillas, but this one's chimps. And like sweet old scientist lady, you know, living amongst the monkeys kind of thing. Right. And kind of poachers like sacrificing show Sacrificing having a normal life to be, uh, just to be one with the monkeys. Yeah, just to research these chimps and live among them. Uh, the poachers from earlier show up and the Simpsons help defend the, uh, the chimp refuge. There's some fun bits of like Marge and Lisa putting bees into blowguns and shooting out their tires. And then the Jeep explodes for no reason. Yeah. Like... <laughs> Just some fun, dumb action bits. They they uh, have, like, Molotov cocktails that they've made out of coconuts. At one point, uh, Lisa 
uh, rips open one of their shirts and he's wearing a Greenpeace shirt. Yeah. And now Lisa's confused. Now there's a as moral why, conundrum. Yeah, as to why this is what's happening. And this is maybe what makes this my favorite episode of The Batches. I love this turn that it turns out they're from Greenpeace trying to save the chimps because... Uh, I believe Bushwell is the woman's name, is running a diamond mine slave camp yeah. using the chimps <laughs> as <laughs> as slavery to dig up diamonds. <laughs> and they find all these diamonds. She's put them everywhere. Like, we just have piles full of diamonds laying around, and her everything she owns is encrusted in diamonds. Uh, and then she, like has a flip out moment and she's like, well, you could just take these diamonds and not, not, you know, arrest me or have me taken away or whatever. You could just take some diamonds and it waits a beat. And then there's the Simpson family loaded full of diamonds yeah. sitting on the airplane yeah, about yeah. to take off, which I <laughs> thought was very funny. Not Lisa. Of course, she's just disgusted. Yeah. Arms crossed. <laughs> Everyone else <laughs> loving their diamonds. Yeah. And then we get a, f- a fun ending gag where text just comes on the screen that says like this is dedicated to the bag boys of America yeah. whose ineptness and greed was the inspiration for this episode. Yeah. <laughs> I also like I'll... The, at the end where they noticed on that billboard that their former uh, tour guide, safari guide, is now <laughs> the president. And the old one is now serving drinks or is the flight attendant. Like, Yeah, I liked that. Yeah, I I thought that was a great one, and I think a lot of the Africa stuff in the middle falls flat. I don't think any yep. of it's very funny. That's what did but... it for me. Yeah, but you're right though that the the diamond mine uh, turn was was clever and fun. Yeah, I think uh, I think it might not slam dunk on laughs very much, but I think yep. writing wise, I think this is a very good episode. Like, there were just parts like the gags during the African stuff. Like I remember thinking. This could be an episode of Home Improvement. Like, this is just, oh, the <laughs> dopey is... dad does something dopey, and uh-oh, you know, like, oh, Africa's crazy. <laughs> this is not how we do it. Uh-oh, you know, like, let's put shit on our face and dance around because it'll look silly because we're not African. Like, ugh, like, there's just such, <laughs> like... I mean, there was a like there was like the like the like the rhino coming out of an egg and shit. I did get a kick out of that, but some of it's just like, oh, this is and not that it was even cringy. It was just I was just like, fuck, this is just it's just a dud. But like, yeah, like looking back at it, like now there there are parts like I love the bag boy thing, like and the fact that because of them not working, they, they everyone is starving to death in Springfield. Like, yeah. I think my favorite sight gag in the in the Africa stuff was when Marge is looking at that cheetah through the binoculars and it's walking towards her and she's like, oh, that's not that fast. And when she puts the binoculars down, the cheetah's right in her face. Yeah. I thought that was a funny <laughs> gag. And yeah, the, the turn of, no, the poachers are Greenpeace because this woman is running a fucking monkey slave yeah. camp. I thought another visual gag that was good was how bad that hippo fucks up the tour guide. Like, yeah. it pretty much kills him. <laughs> <laughs> I like how hippos, hippos are just are absolute fucking... assholes. <laughs> yep, hippos are monsters. Yeah. <laughs> There's some insane seem like just... footage recently of some people in a boat having a hippo and it's not a big boat and that hippo is bigger than that boat and they it goes from big holy shit look at that isn't that crazy to like hey uh can we go a little faster like that hippo <laughs> can swim its ass off it's getting way too fucking close right now i i like that hippos are such violent killers because they don't look it at all they look like yeah. the just lazy they look like you put a manatee on yeah. land like they look just like, ah you're adorable they look like they don't even have to be like saddle broken like you could just climb on it and ride around just, like, uh, <laughs> exactly yeah but nope they're <laughs> murderous yeah, very territorial yeah i i enjoyed that one a lot the i thought the the wait she's the bad guy turn was very good yeah that that, that did now like looking at it like that did save it was that end turn did make it yeah like i thought that was fun i heading into that episode had kind of steeled myself for 
boy, how racist is this going to be in retrospect? (laughs) You know, like, boy, when viewed through the lens of 20 years after it was made, is this going to be cringy? But no, not not bad. No. Well, it could have been worse. I just, yeah, I, I just thought so much of it was boring and not funny, but... Yeah, I think I think my original judgment was a tad too harsh. Yeah, I I, I think it definitely sags in the middle, but it's uh, don't we all? So do I. So our final episode is episode eighteen, trilogy of error, and old Simpsons writers got a little fancy pants for this one. It's got like three interconnecting stories. There's like a Homer plot line, a Lisa plot line, and a Bart plot line, which. I think it's supposed to kind of be a play on the movie Go, but also yeah. kind of a play on Run, Lola, Run, with the least, which is a fucking German movie that wasn't a hit. <laughs> I mean, probably internationally, sure, but like, I don't remember Run, Lola, Run being that big of a deal, but I know that's what they had to be going for with that. Like, But let's I've, get into it. I've heard of it, but that's yeah. it. This one, probably, probably number two on my list of favorites this week. I enjoy, like, even if the comedy part of it fell fun, I just appreciate the the work and just the whole, let's try something different. Because it's, say yeah. what you will, it's fucking different. Like, I like a clever episode. Mm-hmm. Like like the uh, earlier episode of C-Lab 2021 is one of my favorites. Yep. Where it, it's, it's told in reverse, you know. Yep, I like that kind of. That kind of off the wall shit, I'm pretty into. And it uh, starts with him all down and down in the kitchen having breakfast, and they're excited for breakfast until they find out it's muslex, <laughs> muslex, like, which is a depressing cereal. Just looking at the box, like, oh my god. Oh, like, I didn't even know it was a real cereal. Yeah, oh, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a health cereal that just looks de- like it's just a box that just reads child sadness. Like, oh, what? <laughs> I forgot this is the aunt that wants to be healthy. She's not the cool aunt. Like we There's uh there's no there's no such thing as a fun or good tasting health cereal. Yep, exactly. Cereal is either rad or just sad. Like rad or sad mm-hmm. are your two options with cereal. I love a good bowl of cereal, but man, like just a bland bowl of cornflakes, that fucking shit, that's heartbreaking. Like just <laughs> looking at it, just such a limp dick food like, oh God, like <laughs> it's it's by no means my favorite but i will occasionally have a bowl of regular ass cornflakes with some banana in it yeah, you know but you gotta church it up with the banana i could see that or a, or a bit of honey yeah. like i'll i'll get down on that but yeah it's it's by no i would rather eat cocoa puffs for sure yeah <laughs> i'm more of a cocoa krispies or a cocoa pebbles man but i i see what you're saying i get the sentiment yeah. So they're all bummed about that. But Marge is cooking some brownies for, uh, I think, for dessert for later that evening. But Homer, of course, being a little piggy, trying to reach in there and get, get, a, get himself a brownie. Uh, I, I remember as a kid doing that, whenever my mom would make chocolate chip cookies, I'd want to scoop a cookie dough. And oh, yeah. You, you want to lick the spoon or something. Yeah, my mom showing off her fencing skills by smacking your hand with a wooden spoon and everything that to you. Because it had raw eggs in it. It's like, Mom, this, we live in a trailer park that's just full of poison. <laughs> I don't think those raw eggs are going to take me out of the game. <laughs> yeah, I I for sure would dig a, dig a finger full of cookie oh, dough God, out. and was good. And, yeah, like, if I got swatted away, it was because... No, you you'll eat this whole goddamn bowl if I let you go yeah. away. It was never for any worry of eggs. Yeah, I was always told it was because it was raw eggs. Maybe that's just my mom told me. She thought that would scare me a little. Did she know? <laughs> if you uh, if you got a, a a pan of brownies, would you rather have a centerpiece or an edge piece? Oh like, my do you God. want do you want edge on it or not? I like them both, but as long as they aren't overcooked, I take an edge. I like the crispiness yeah. of an edge. Yeah, I want a corner. I want I want as much edge as possible. Yeah, I'm with you there. I'm yeah. with you. So uh, Homer is again reaching for the brownie squares, ends up getting his fucking thumb accidentally cut <laughs> off by Marge, who's slicing the brownies up. It's like, 
between the nail gun with Maggie scene and this thought, like, we have a fuck, <laughs> have a, like a, I don't know, a fucking snuff film episode in season 13. Like, shit's getting fucking, <laughs> I don't know. It's just weird, like, with the blandness of the Simpsons animation, when something that gross happens, it's kind of jarring. Yeah, I guess it didn't, uh, it didn't occur to me in the moment, but yeah, it was, it was a nail gun just two episodes yeah. ago. So we get now, of course, the house is in chaos. Homer. Oh, and one thing we do, we should mention, too, before, just before this, Lisa showed Homer her uh, science fair project, which is a, a robot named Ling, Lingwo, Lingwo, is that the name of it? Like Something linguist like that. robot. And it's a yeah, robot. Yeah, it's a grammar-correcting yeah, robot. Grammar, let's get contracted, she says at one point. <laughs> <laughs> so the, it's a robot that will correct your grammatical errors, which oh, is like, he's like, me like beer. Or it's like, uh, or he's, it was like, correction, I like beer. And then it's, Homer's like, okay, and he pours beer down its mouth, which that, yeah. was, that was a fun, dumb Homer, even though Lisa was not impressed by that because the robot almost broke because robots don't drink beer. Yeah. She was not into that. Yeah. So, so Homer's thumb has been cut off, and it now was just a mad dash to get the the thumb reattached. Uh, there's a good scene. The dog gets on, gets it, and runs away. So he, it's Homer without a thumb chasing the dog to get his thumb back, and ends up going through the Flanders house where I just like with Costco. <laughs> I didn't realize that by this point, Harry Potter was a phenomenon that people would understand. Yeah, I I've never read any of the books or seen any of the movies. Nor have I'm completely p- completely inept when it comes to Looks Harry like Potter. We have another but... podcast coming up, the us going oh, through Harry Potter. <laughs> there we go. Yeah. I've I've heard that I would like it, and yep. I you know I've I've heard that from enough friends whose opinions I trust on things. So I'm like I should give that a shot at some point. But yeah, I I had a similar thought of. Like, were these a thing by then? And then I had to think, like, my cousin, I had a younger cousin who was super into them, and that would have been around this time. So I guess so. I like that uh, that Flanders is reading the book to, to Todd, and gets he's only, like, halfway through the book, and he just goes, and then Harry Potter and all his friends went to hell for practicing black magic yeah. and throws the book in the fireplace, yeah. and Todd <laughs> cheers. Yeah. <laughs> And then Rod wails as the uh, Homer stomps on his uh, his toy train because it's about to run over his thumb. <laughs> that was a nice combination of scenes there. I could see you in your in your elder years here uh, getting deeply into model trains. You know, I think I maybe I'd have to have like a basement dedicated to it. I think I can make world building. That's what you're kind of doing. It's basically like a like a 3d version of like sim city like you're building a little town yeah. i could see you maybe not getting into the arts and crafts part of it of yeah. like painting little that figurines. is a big part of it yeah yeah but i could see you getting into the ah look at that train go hey yeah, look at that hey oh there's a hill <laughs> oh oh it made it yay <laughs> clapping to myself to a cat yeah look at that <laughs> Watch this. I can switch the tracks. Oh, now it's going that way. Yeah, that old Burlington Northern, who knows where it's going to go. I mean, there's only three different <laughs> options, but who knows? <laughs> so at this point, they're, they they are now, they get in the car, and it's a race to the to get Homer to the emergency room. And during all this time, Marge accidentally rear-ends Rainier Wolfcastle and demolishes his... I think it's a Lamborghini or a Ferrari. A Ferrari, Ferrari I believe. Ferrari, yeah. And he goes out and golf clubs, I think a, a play on, I think Jack Nicholson, or not Jack Nicholson. Uh, yeah, Jack Nicholson did do this. He got in a road rage incident and beat the crap out of someone's car with a golf club. Uh, but, I but, could see that. But during, and it was right around this time, if I had to guess too. And during this time, a uh, Homer has uh, snuck out of the car and tells Marge to come on with him. And they steal the Ferrari, and that's what they take to the emergency room, where Homer finds out that uh, his health insurance doesn't cover thumb reattachment. And what my heart was racing and hoping I would hear is, let's go see Dr. Nick. Yep. And that's what we get. But I was, I, I was very happy to see Dr. Nick. But I felt cheated that we barely got any Dr. Nick, at least right away. Mm-hmm. Because well, they, instead, when they go to Moe's. Yeah, when they arrive, his... Or actually, and I have, 
are we in the right order? I think we're not in the right order here. I think he stops at Moe's first, and he goes in because he wants to pickle his uh, thumb, and he ends up sitting in there so long that when he comes out, Marge is gone. And that's when Cletus, yeah. the slack-jawed yokel, comes by, and he gets a ride in Cletus's chicken coop truck, and they, they go to Dr. Nick's. Yeah, exactly. There we go. And then during the there is a very uh, gnarly line dropped during that time. Or no, this might be coming up here. I don't want to give it away yet. I think you know what I'm referring to. I don't, Ooh. but I'm on the edge of my seat now. Okay. Well, see, I'm, I'm getting ahead of myself because this episode's a little convoluted here. So, so and then while they're watching, it turns out Doctor Nick's office is on fire. So no Doctor Nick help for for Homer. Uh, someone steals the chicken coop, coop truck, so now <laughs> Homer is forced to walk to Shelbyville to get his thumb attached. And during this, he he gets despondent that he's not going to get there in time, but he kind of says a goodbye to his thumb. And during this time, the goddamn skull of Linglo or Linglo, the robot, lands in front of him from a very powerful <laughs> explosion. And I like how Homer is like attached to the robot he spent literally 15 yep. seconds with. Like, <laughs> they have like a nice He's end torn up moment. about it. Yep. <laughs> and then we get a hard cut to the morning. It's 7.03 a.m. again. They're eating their mucilics. And now it's time for Lisa's story. So Lisa is... Uh, it has a robot that Homer pours fucking beer down the throat of, and she's busy fixing. She has a goddamn fucking wire feed welder in her bedroom, apparently. <laughs> <laughs> and she's welding the robot during the time when Homer accidentally cuts his thumb off. So she gets the robot ready, but the guy she misses the school bus. She asks for a ride, but Marge is gone because they had to, she had to bring Homer to the emergency room. So now it's this is where the run Lola run aspect of it kind of comes in. Okay, I've never seen that film, so I didn't so, get any of that. <laughs> I did like that she immediately got a ride from Krusty. Uh, in, is it Krusty's limo or just his car? <laughs> yeah, in his limo. Because that's the slide down window, yeah. But she ends up going to fucking West Springfield Elementary. <laughs> There's like a French class going on when it should be science class. She meets a boy that she is meant destined to meet, and they have a moment that he tells her you have to win the science fair so she is off again run lisa run <laughs> she ends up by moe's one of my favorite lines it's mm. noon that's when about the time dad gets the brew shakes <laughs> yeah i wrote that down also because oh. i thought that was real funny but his dad's not or uh, homer's not there no one in the in the bar will give him a ride she asks uh, chief wiggum but he's busy because he's doing an undercover operation and he mentions, we have a guy wearing a wire, just like in Nash Bridges, which I thought that was a nice reference. <laughs> and I've I've never seen an episode yeah, of Nash Bridges. Oh, just, nope, nope, that's a lie. I tuned into one episode because Stone Cold Steve Austin was the <laughs> yes. guest on that one, and they made a big deal about it on Raw. Like, tune oh, into Nash awesome. Bridges on Sunday. Stone Cold is going to be on it. Nash Bridges is like one of those examples of like a show that is on CBS that no one under the age of 50 watches that yeah. somehow inexplicably gets seven seasons made because it just... Just keeps truck trucking along, has its faithful viewers, you know, like just like Walker Texas Ranger two was a CBS show, like just lasts for like touched by an angel. There were so many shows just like aimed yeah. at older people. That that CBS is bread and butter. It's later, but I always think of JAG and yep. NCIS yep. in the same boat. Yep, CBS really figured out like the they kind of took the law and order police procedural, like, I guess they, they removed the uh, the law. It was just the order. I guess it's, yeah. it's more like order and, like, science, like, they, which I was like, why are these, like, who are these? Well, you know what it is? It's true crime people. It makes total sense. Like, why are these people giving so much a shit about, like, like let's take a look at these fibers. Like, that sounds boring. I don't want to <laughs> do that. Like, what are you throwing a perp's head against the hood of your car, you know, like. But hey, who am I to who am I to judge CBS's goddamn fucking you know, <laughs> business model? Apparently, it works. <laughs> yeah, they figured it out. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, Lisa uh, comes outside, leaves the bar after uh, 
uh, uh, Chief Wiggum, because he's Chief Wiggum's a terrible cop, blows his own cover by talking into the wire, which apparently is a thing that can happen. And all we hear yeah, is gunfire and, and chaos. But we yeah, sal- you hear Fat Tony on the other yeah. end be like, get him, boys, you yeah. know, whatever, and then gunshots. <laughs> and Lisa leaves the bar only to find Marge in a, in a Ferrari. Like, okay, bring me to school, Mom. And they run out of gas. Uh, because Marge can't understand the Italian gas tank, which I liked. I f- I believe the one that uh, that it was on, which was empty, was Mamma Mia oh, instead oh, really? of empty. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and from there, it's uh, they're just sitting there in traffic, and then the goddamn chicken coop trucks by, and and Marge's like, "Let's jump in that Hicks truck." <laughs> <laughs> How quickly she makes that decision. So yeah. they're riding with the chickens, which they do not realize Homer is in the front with Cletus. They're going. They go to the Doctor Nick's office, and it turns out Lisa and Marge were the ones that stole the truck so that they can get to school or get Lisa yeah. to school. And as they're driving the chicken coop truck, Bart pokes his head out of a goddamn manhole cover. And they almost hit Bart's face, like almost <laughs> behead Bart. And then we uh, we get the hard reset. It's seven oh three a.m. What's going on? Now it is time for Bart's part of the story, and and which I almost had forgotten about is early on the doorbell starts ringing and Bart's like it's Milhouse, and then it rings. He's got some good news or something like that. And Milhouse, yeah, is, I I had forgotten that too until we got to this part of the episode. Yeah. And Bart is super excited and like Milhouse is like, I got something I got to show you in the woods. It's so great. It's like if they find this like cave out in the woods, like where'd you find this? And Millhouse goes, "This is where I go to cry." It's like Jesus, <laughs> which I I loved for two reasons: a, that's very funny; b, that is uh, the first in a the, we haven't seen one in a while of oh I know that meme. Oh, you're right. Yep. Yep. Because I've I, I've seen that meme a thousand times of those two staring into that cave yep. with the caption, "This is where I go to you cry." You know what else? You now that you say it, flashing back to a previous episode in this batch with the nerd spray. That's a popular meme. Is Lisa on that stage in front of that big screen? Oh yes, I didn't realize that. That's where that I didn't notice it at the time. That but yeah, exact... Lisa in front of the screen for sure. Yep, that's a popular meme format. But now I did like to when they get in the uh, they get in the cave, and it's uh, Bart sacks burlap sacks, and then Millhouse excitedly <laughs> it gets better. They're full of fireworks. <laughs> Uh, just excited about sex. Yep. And then now, again, they, they apparently don't have to go to school anymore in Springfield. <laughs> and it just begins them just fucking shit up with fireworks, which what a 10-year-old would do. And, they're having, yep. and they, it turns out, are the reason that Dr. Nick's office explodes because <laughs> a fireworks mishap during which uh, the sea captain is getting a penile enhancement surgery. <laughs> uh, there's a... Uh, I love that line of dialogue, Dr. Nick going, so do you want me to go longer or wider? And the sea captain thinks for a second and just goes, ah, let's do both. Yeah, why not? You're here. <laughs> Get it taken care of. <laughs> so they they are discovered in kind of like a flop house with all these fireworks by uh, Chief Wiggum and his, and his deputies. And the boys are kind of coerced into being mob informants. Which that's, we find out, they're the ones that are wearing the wire during the Fat Tony fireworks <laughs> exchange. <laughs> yeah. And there's some very good sight gags of, like, of the fireworks and, like, have them running with sparklers so they can see they're down in the sewers when they meet. And that's how, why Bart pokes his head on that manhole cover is because they're running away from Fat Tony and his goons. Because that's a good scene, too, where Bart's, like, explaining. He's like, Mom, like, like and, and, and Milhouse is below him the whole time with, with <laughs> mafia goons looking to murder yeah. him. <laughs> like, <laughs> Just like, Bart, hurry up. Yeah, that was funny. Yeah, so I thought that was pretty good. <laughs> so then they're on the run from the goons. The goon, they're up, Now they're above land, and there's a big chase scene going on, and... They eventually get they get cornered, but Marge and Lisa kind of save the day. 
And now I am I'm fucking getting lost. How does Homer get back into the story? Well, Marge throws the robot, which oh, yeah. uh, she she throws the robot at the mobsters who have Barton Millhouse cornered, and they start hollering at the robot in in horribly broken Italian mafia speak. Oh yeah, which yeah. The robot can't take. That's what it is. He explodes, setting off the bag of fireworks, which is what blows his head out of town where it lands by <laughs> yeah, Homer. That's okay. Yeah, I forget about the interaction between the mafia, the mafia goons and the robot. <laughs> yeah, and so, we don't address how Homer gets back. Yep, he's just he's back just next back. time we yep. see him. Yeah. And uh and the goons are are disabled by the explosion of the fire. They are all very disheveled when the cops are arresting them. And then it's kind of flash forward to their back at the school, and through someone's in uh, quick thinking idea, Lisa's science project becomes getting his, uh, her dad's thumb reattached, which they use one of the uh, the mafia doctor who knows how yep. to do that kind of stuff. Because <laughs> uh, Fat Tony proudly says. He once removed a slug from my shoulder and put it into the head of a stoolie. <laughs> <laughs> ah, I love, I, I love the phrase stoolie. Yeah. And then we get the reappearance of, is it, it's uh, Krusty's monkey is how the episode ends. And it's Krusty's monkey screaming and monkey noises, but the it's deciphered as this plot makes no sense. Like, what are you doing? Like, <laughs> Which I I took umbrage yeah, with. It, to- I think it, works it fine. makes total sense. Works fine. Like, yep. And it probably took a lot of hard work to I put agree. this together. I agree. There might have been a couple like slight kind of breaks in logic, but by that it went fine. No, I uh, I really liked that one a yep. lot. I'm with you. Yeah, I thought that was a lot of fun. Yeah, like you said, I I like a good clever super outside the box episode so anytime people fuck with structure you know that was that was one of the super appealing things for me seeing pulp fiction at a young age being like wait i didn't even know you could make a movie oh yeah good you know what i mean yeah yeah same with memento like wait i didn't know you could do this yep like um so i like that kind of shit yeah, I'm trying to think. Like, Usual Suspects was around that same time too. That was, that was totally that kind of thing. <laughs> Fun fact: I have only ever seen the last ten minutes of the Usual Suspects. Oh well, <laughs> don't have to bother. <laughs> nope, sure don't. Yeah, that's fun. Uh, I remember uh, a buddy down the hall in the dorms in college was. Uh, like I was walking by and his door was open. So I went in and sat down. I was like, oh, what are you watching? He's like, oh, the usual suspects. And I was like, okay, cool. And I sat down and watched the last 10 minutes. And he's like, ah, man, I love that movie. I was like, oh, I've never seen it. And he was (laughs) upset. He's like, fuck, man, you should have said something. You lived and you learned. I had the same thing. I had someone in the line for the movie told me the, the trick ending to the sixth sense. Oh, that's a bummer. I was like, okay, well, I guess I don't have to fucking bother then. Wonderful. I mean, it's still a pretty good movie. Yeah, oh, but... yeah. And, yeah no, looking back, I was like, you know, it, it has its moments, yeah. yeah just, it would have had uh... a lot more impact if I wouldn't have seen that. Because I love that no kind of shit. shit. Yeah, like, I wish I could have enjoyed that crazy ass ending, yeah. <laughs> well, f- Lucky you, he does a crazy ass ending yep. in every fucking movie. So. I was and I stuck with M Night Shyamalan up until I even liked The Village, which I know a lot of people didn't like that, but it's right or, like The Lady in the Water. I don't even know if I finished watching that. I just wasn't interested. Like I uh, The Lady in the Water is the first one of his that I didn't bother with because yep. The Village left such a bad taste oh, in so my yeah, mouth. Yeah, I, was I was like, I was like, I'm done. And then I even wanted to like The Happening, I think it was called. The, yeah, with Marky Mark. Yeah, I was like, God, I like this premise, but Jesus, that sucked too. That movie's fucking bad. Mark yeah. Wahlberg gives a heartfelt apology to a plant in that movie. Yeah, it's so fucking bad. Like, I mean, some of those early scenes are pretty gnarly, but like, it just, like, once you get into the meat of it, it's like, holy fuck. 
is this the direction this is going to go in now? Like, <laughs> I I remember liking all of Signs up until about the last see, five minutes. I even like, like Signs. Yep, I'm on board with Signs. Uh, even I mean, that whole water I, thing, like, really? That's what it is? Yeah. But I was like, I was with it enough to that point that I was able to look past that that part of it yeah see see i liked the whole movie and then when the ending happened i was like never mind fuck this movie yeah. like uh, it, i couldn't hold on through that corner i had friends that were that way about the movie sunshine that sci-fi movie that that british director that guy that did like, oh i like sunshine they, i had friends where the ending was too out there like it didn't fit what they thought it should have been so but that's yeah, a danny I, boyle joint danny boyle, isn't it? there you go yep like yep. kind of goes into some uh Oh, I can't think of the movie that it's, uh, it's kind of, the ending is similar to, and I had some friends that kind of had beef with that. Like, you know what, man, the movie's pretty rad up until that point, so I can, I can ride out 10 minutes of troublesome parts. <laughs> oh. Yeah, that one, that one didn't buck me. The line that I'm thinking of, and I don't know exactly what they're looking at when it happens, but it's Cletus in the goddamn chicken coop truck, where he's like, uh, you must be one of those uh, magic TV queers. Oh, right, when Homer's doing the disconnected thumb yeah, bit, like, like, ah, like pulling guacamole. his thumb off. That's right, I forgot <laughs> yeah. about that. Jeepers Damn it, Cletus. <laughs> well, I mean, to be fair, Cletus would absolutely say yeah, that. It's so, the character, yeah. <laughs> Cletus would say that today. Yep. <laughs> yeah, you know, I forgot about that. I don't think this, this batch was as strong as the last two, but it's still better, I think, than... Some of the batches we had probably around like 47, 48. So, um, yeah, I think I think this show is still perfectly fine. Yes, it's not as good as it used to be. Still totally fine. Yeah, I'm still with it. I'm still. The episodes don't ever like suck. Or I'm like f- that goddamn Mel Gibson one. Still is the one that sticks in my mind. Like, <laughs> man, they are making me work for it. Yeah, that was uh, that was a rough one. To yeah. be fair. Let's keep watching them. We'll do uh, five. I almost said three more, but five more next week. Fuck, it was a long weekend, yep. man. Oh, <laughs> Jesus. It's fucking, it's the, you know, as the as we're recording this, it's nine o'clock on Sunday and I'm ready to fucking go to bed. Uh, we got five more next week. Uh, we will do 19 through 21 of season 12. And then one and two from season thirteen. Only twenty one episodes in in twelve. I think so. that's going to become a common theme. Oh, okay. Yeah, we're gonna we we get to do a crossover episode, which I like doing because mm-hmm. you always bring fun history. What facts. exciting facts am I going to find about season three? Tune in next week, dear listeners, and you will find out. Thirteen. You thirteen. Mean. 13 <laughs> or whatever episode i happen to <laughs> happen to wiki search <laughs> yeah whatever you manage to some look hot, up next week. hot gossip from season 28 <laughs> <laughs> uh, looking forward to that looking forward to watching more goddamn playoff basketball yeah, nathan the Lakers are out. In... new lease on life uh Kyrie okay. irving got All hurt right. today we'll see what that if and i don't want teams to lose because of injuries but if the nets were to get knocked out who I would. You wouldn't be. You wouldn't be too bent out I would of shape be about so it. En- like I would enjoy it so much to have f- like four or five remaining teams that I'm perfectly happy with them winning it all. Like if if Kyrie, you know, if Kyrie is out and the Bucks win the series, I bet they don't want to win that way either. But They'll you wouldn't it. be too butthurt about yeah. it, yeah. Yeah, when they're on a victory parade, they're not going to be like, oh, geez, you know, and no, all they'll be. They'll be cheesing on a on the top of a bus as adoring <laughs> people throw shit at them. Like, as uh, I really wanted to see Denver put up a fight, but yeah. as 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 this is being recorded with seven minutes left in the game, they're down by ten to uh, the Suns. Interesting, yeah. But if injuries, man, if they have Jamal Murray, if he wouldn't have blown his knee out, they'd probably be the front runner in the West. I think I think he makes that big of a difference. Yeah, I look forward to watching more of the uh, the Sixers and Hawks series. That series has been super fun to watch. Yeah. Yeah. I like watching the Hawks play. I, I think the Hawks... They have a kind of an interesting mix of players. Like, Yeah, like, the Hawks might be my like post-Lakers getting knocked out team. It's nice to see like a guy like Danilo Gallinari get to have a playoff run. He played on a lot of 
pretty forgettable Knicks teams. And yeah, he's I've always kind of liked his game. More basketball. Plenty of basketball. Plenty of shooty hoops. Loving it. Uh, other than that, not a lot going on over here. Got all my socializing all crammed into a three-day weekend, and I'm fucking done. I'm, yeah. I'm going. I'm going back in go the back, hole. Go back into the into the into the cocoon. Yeah, I'm done. I'm done with it. You, what's what's going on in in the life of the Nathan? Oh, what's what's happening? More telling jokes at open mics that nobody wants to hear. I gotta get out to fucking open mics this week. Ooh, and yeah, it's it's a tough band-aid to pull off when you haven't done it for like a year. Oh, man, I just, yeah, it's... I just had brainwashed myself because I was so diligent about going all the time that, like, I didn't even give myself the option not to go. But once you once a pandemic makes that option mandatory, ooh, it's, <laughs> it's nice to not have to go outside at night 9 p.m. and go tell jokes at an empty bar. To other comics who aren't going to laugh. because don't want to hear it. They just want it to be yeah, over with. They're just there for themselves. Like, they don't give a fuck about your new joke. Yep. So, so yeah. that's exciting. Like, get back out and do that. Yeah. But you gotta, you have to like the process mm-hmm. if you're going to like the end of it. Yeah, so very, very true. Go out, tell some jokes, enjoy ourselves. Uh, you, dear listener, also enjoy yourselves. 19 through 21 of season 12 and 1 and 2 of season 13. We're almost all out of new metal to be Ooh, throwing your yeah. way, sadly. So enjoy it while it lasts. Yep. Just you wait for next week. Yeah. <laughs> Our magnum opus yep. next week. <laughs> That's going to do it. Enjoy yourselves. See everybody.